evaluate the indefinite integral using a trig substitution. We're looking at integral of radical e to the 2x minus 1 dx. So if we look at this, this is the square of something. So we're going to be looking at a secant substitution. But first, I want to get this a little bit cleaner so we're not substituting two times at once. So this will have a double substitution. But the first one, just going to put it in another variable so it's easier to look at. So we note here we want this to be a square. And we're already using x for something, so I'm going to have to use another letter. So I'll go with u. So I'll let u be equal to e to the x. du equals derivative of e to the x is e to the x dx. And then I note right away it'll be easy just to stick in uh, u where I had e to the x because that's what we're substituting. So that's going to be u times dx. And then dx is just going to be du over u. So from there to there. Now I could stick in my u. That goes in as u squared minus 1, radical, and then du over u. For this type of radical, this is going to be of the form of one of our trig substitutions, the one where we use secant for u, and where my a is equal to a 1. So we normally would have an x squared minus an a squared. u squared minus a squared works also. So we're going to let u be equal to secant of theta. Then I'm going to have du equals secant theta, tan theta, d theta, derivative of secant theta. So I put things in. I have secant squared minus 1, secant theta, tan theta, d theta. And then u is equal to secant theta. So the secant thetas are going to go away. Then we just have to worry about this term out in front. Now. Let's uh, just run through the mantra for how we get to the tan and secant stuff. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. I divide everything by cosine squared. That gives me a 1. Sine over cosine is tangent. Squaring that gives me tan squared. And then 1 over cosine is secant. We square it to get secant squared. Next, I want to push the 1 to the other side. And we notice secant squared theta minus 1 is tan squared theta. So tan squared goes into there. The radical kills the square. And I'm just left with a tangent. We also have a tangent over here. So we're going to be left with tan squared theta d theta. This we know how to do. Using my formula over here again, I'm going to write secant squared theta minus 1. And each of these pieces we know how to do. Integrating a 1 d theta just gives me a theta. Integrating secant squared, well, secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So if I integrate, I get the tangent back. And our answer is tan theta minus theta plus c. We're not done, though. Our answer is in terms of theta, but the original problem is given in terms of x. So we need to do a little bit more work. We do that by drawing a right triangle. On this triangle, I'm going to put in my theta, and then we're going to follow our nose to try to fill in the sides. If I look at what we substitute, we have u equals secant theta. So I'll write that as u over 1. But also note, for the right triangle, the secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. It's 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we just flip it over. Now, we want the tangent because our answer is tan theta minus theta. So tangent's going to be opposite over adjacent for the right triangle. So that's going to give me radical u squared minus 1. I put that in for tangent. I note that I also need theta. Well, theta, u is equal to secant theta. So I could push the secant to the other side to get secant inverse of u. So we put that in, and then we put our constant in. Now all I need to do is put in e to the x for u, and then we get our final answer. Of course. We're going to check our answer to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So let's do that. So this is e to the 2x minus 1 to the 1 half. I'm going to take its derivative. So the half comes down. 1 comes off the exponent. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative e to the 2x is just going to be you rewrite your e to the 2x and then take the derivative of the top, which brings a 2 down. For the secant inverse, e to the x, taking the derivative of this. Let's recall how we do this. 
I'm going to put a box around the inside, and then the rule for secant inverse is it's 1 over box times radical box squared minus 1. In fact, it's actually absolute value box out in front. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to stick in the e to the x for the box, and then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative box, which is e to the x, which is going to be the e to the x I pick up here. Absolute value of e to the x? Well, e to the x is always positive, so it's like the absolute value signs don't exist. So we just get an e to the x here, then we have radical e to the 2x minus 1. Okay, you may need to look up this derivative if it's not right there off the top of your head. Now, the e to the x's go away, leaving me with, from the first one, I'm going to get e to the 2x over radical e to the 2x minus 1. From this term, we're getting a minus 1, radical e to the 2x minus 1. Put it together, we have e to the radical 2x minus 1 over its square root. So this is two square roots up here. Or you could think of this as being exponent 1. This is exponent 1 half. So I'm going to take a half off of the top, which leaves me with radical e to the 2x minus 1. And we note this is good. This is our original integrand, so the check works out.